So somewhere over the rainbow, and of course we're not talking about rainbow, but we are talking about searching. And as we're talking about searching, we're talking about giving and regression analysis or regression output and being able to search and find our slope, our y-intercept, our correlation coefficient, our coefficient of determination, our standard deviation of the residual. So. Here, I'm not giving you any data. I'm just going to give you the overall scenario. The question, what they are analyzing is, based on your quiz average, can you determine what your final exam score is going to be? Because that's how college is. A lot of quizzes, and then you go, bam, there's that final exam. Well, let's look at this. Here is your coefficient of the slope. This right here is the... The input, because we're saying based on our quiz averages, we can make a prediction, look at it right here, about what our final exam is based on the regression, regression line that they have, that they um, calculated here. Please notice how they have defined the, the variables instead of just putting in X and Y. Next, let's recognize our Y-intercept. So as we know, it's our Y-intercept is here. And as we are looking at this, I also want you to look at the organization that you have going on here. Okay, you've got your predictor, you've got your coefficient. And that's pretty consistent in not just the mini tab. I'm going to show you an Excel in a few minutes. Okay, notice right here we've got the standard deviation of the residual, which tells us, given that least square regression line, how many, um, given um, your test scores, what typically your final exam score is going to be off by. Okay, notice here we've got our R squared. We don't deal with the adjusted. R squared is your coefficient of determination. We're talking about 37% of the final exam scores are going to be predicted um, based on that least square regression line given the quiz averages we can find our correlation coefficient, the linearity, strength, and direction after we find the square root of that. So just do the math on that. Next, let's look at a different type of output. Oh, one more thing. If you're wondering what do we do with this, what we do is we wait for Chapter 11. Here, I'm not sure if I mentioned this on this video because I mentioned it on the other ones. These printouts or this printout is attached to your calendar. So you can write it down if you want, but seriously, nobody's got time for that. But I won't be handing it out to you, but you have access to it in your calendar. I am going to put it in your locker at some point. So let's look at this printout. Okay, so this is an Excel regression output. So let's look at this again. Ah, we can tell here's our slope. Okay, and again, I asked you to notice the presentation um, earlier. So there's your slope. Here is your y-intercept. I can make the equation of a line. What is this about in terms of the actual scenario? I don't know. I just wanted to grab information. Here, this is slightly different. This is your standard error of the regression line right here from the Excel. And um, notice that I also mentioned to you that the standard error of the res um, residual is the same as the standard, the standard deviation of the residual is also referred to as the standard error of the regression line, so they go hand in hand. You can see this is obviously R squared because it has the R squared there, and it explains what proportion of the um, variation is explained by that least square regression line. So, another output, so this is just something that you guys can refer back to when you're trying to remember how do I read, how do I find my equation of a line when they don't give me data? So, TTFM, ta-ta for now.